think I'm going to start off actually with Yusuf, uh, because it follows on quite nicely from the film and the, the presentation. Now, Yusuf was the beneficiary accountability, uh, sorry, he is currently the beneficiary accountability officer with ADESO, and he's the former communications officer with Save the Children. And he, Yusuf is a sp communications specialist focusing on using media and ICT <laughs> tools to enhance information sharing, participation and complaints handling. And uh, he, you saw him in the film. Uh, I'd like to welcome you, Yusuf. Can you hear us? Yes, Wendy, I'm hearing you very well. Great. Um, I, Yusuf, I wondered if you could just talk about the, the project in Wajir in a little bit more detail. Can you elaborate a bit more on the project and, and how, the, how your aims and objectives were achieved? What were, and, you know, talk about some of the challenges involved that you mentioned in the film in a bit more detail. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The project project in Wajir came at a time when it was really crisis brought in by famine and uh, drought during the 2011 uh, crisis in the Horn of Africa. Uh, the project was started a bit late, but again, very importantly, when the rain started also, we have gone into another crisis of floods and poor hygiene and all that that comes with uh, communities in marginalized areas of Kenya. Uh, the objective and the aim of this project was to really help the agency as save the children to strengthen its capacity in responding to the information and communication needs of its wide beneficiaries in Wajir County. So, so that uh, we respond to emergencies very well, there's opportunity for feedback, enhance its accountability system, and also build a very strong relationship with its constituents, beneficiaries. Uh, at that time, remembering that Wajir County is in the northern side of the country, a uh, very marginalized, a lot of state neglect where the infrastructural development is very low, the healthcare access and quality of healthcare, water, education, all that are, are really very, very low and poor. So what this pro the way the project was designed was uh, to make use of a community radio that was already existing in, in the county. There's one community radio, Pulwajir Community Radio. That's right from early few months before the project started, and people picked up that radio very well. It's a radio that people understood. It was the only community radio that could speak their language, could speak what they know, and they could understand where it comes from, the culture, the ownership, everything. So what we have designed in Wajir is to run a weekly live talk show with foreign program, uh, two livestock marketing bulletin, one in from Wajir market and the other one from Habaswain market. Habaswain is a town so nearly 150 kilometers from Wajir town, where Save the Children also had a separate program from the Wajir one. So they were, these were two main markets for any livestock owner to take their livestock for sale, one in Havaswain and one in Wajir. The Havaswain market was on Saturday and the Wajir livestock market on Monday. So we broadcast the livestock bulletin for Monday in Wajir and for Saturday for have a swing both in the radio. The livestock products were broadcast were covering the main livestock that was kept in the county, uh, camel, cattle, uh, sheep, and goats. And it provides information on the amount of volume of livestock that came to the market and how the number traded, and very importantly, the prices, the category of the prices, the minimum price and the maximum price. The bullet in the, the Sorry, the talk, the phone in live talk show was covering on the thematic areas that Save the Children covers in its uh, intervention. Save the Children had a multi-sectoral program on uh, child protection, livelihoods, water, sanitation, and health. A massive health program that covers child, maternal, and primary health care. Sorry, well sorry, Yusuf. Sorry to interrupt, but I wonder if you. Um it's good to have a, an overview of the program, but I just wonder if you could talk about some of the, the challenges that you faced in, in implementing the 
communication side of, of the program? Uh, the main challenges is one, the main challenges was the network, especially with the phone, uh, the mobile phones that we bought for community focal persons, the relief committees, uh, the community health workers, mother to mother support group counselors, the water users association lead persons, phones that we bought for them, so that we engage with them, an effective two way communication between our office and the beneficiaries. One of the main things was the presence of telephony network in the whole of the county. The present, the network connections were not that strong. There were a lot of far flung areas, far flung villages that had not the connection. That was the main challenge. But interestingly, uh, it was not a bad idea to give everyone the phone. What we have realized later on is that an area, a village there that we knew that completely there's no access network. At one time, we managed to receive a mobile phone call on an emergency labor case that a mother who is on labor, a woman who was about to deliver, there's no, there's no way they could bring her out of the village because they hardly see any car that comes there. They could not communicate with us. But the community health worker ran to an, kilometers away to pick a network after he climbed a tree. He called me directly by my phone to tell me, we have a woman who has been in labor for the last three days, and there's her life is in danger. There's no way we can assist her. Are you of help? And immediately, there's always a safe children stand by car that normally attends to such uh, emergencies. So we, we saved her, her, her life. There are few cases like that, that you really see giving all of them a mobile phone was not a bad idea anyway. And Yusuf, uh, well, that's an that interesting that. point that you raise. And I wonder, um, this. I think both Anita and Carol mentioned that in some cases in the pilot projects, the relationship between the the agency and the community changed. I mean, would you say that that's the case in your experience? And if so, in what ways did it change? Did those relationships change? The, the relationship changed very strongly because this is a community that has not known uh, how to relate with uh, aid agencies, even government agencies before that the only thing they had is one-way communication, someone coming from an office to come to the village and pass information in a public meeting, or that will talk to a gatekeeper like a chief or a village head, that's what they knew. But now having a community health worker or a relief committee who directly liaises with the office in Wajir, is, the relationship has changed. They know a number of things through the relief committees with the, our partner agency, RF and WASDA, they, they are told, when they are supposed to, uh, they are expecting to get their food ratio. When there's any delay in case of uh, any changes because the, the uh, climatic issues, in rains and the roads are blocked because the roads are not paved on that side of the world. So this information that's going back and forth from the office and the villages uh, has built the relationship between the aid agency and the communities. And again, very importantly, they understand as us sort of empathy that has been created. They know when, for example, a program is ending or there's even funding gap or they know this organization cannot respond to this mm -hmm. or that issue, they have had it over radio or they have got the information from a focal person, they understand. They understand the position of this organization, what our strength, what we can do, and how we can respond. Mm. So they will not just uh, they start rioting if they don't see a staff, they understand. This, you know, this program has said last week, uh, when is it coming back? We are able to start it after two weeks. We are doing this and that. They, they know this information very well with this two-way communication. That's uh, building a stronger partnership and relationship with Wendy. Thanks, Yusuf. Sorry. Um, I'm, I'm not trying to hurry you along too much, but we, but we just have a few other speakers. But I wanted to ask you finally, um, in your new role, or relatively new role, given that you're with Adesso now, are you finding that you're yes. able to apply the experience that you had under the pilot project with your new organization? Uh, perfectly, perfectly. What, what? With a disorder, you know, <laughs> perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> no, carry on. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a two-way communication using a centralized telephone-based system, actually, uh, with the, one of the largest cash transfer program in South Central Somalia. Uh, remotely monitoring it 
and communicating with beneficiaries from our Nairobi uh, regional office by use of two mobile phones that are sort of a hotline. What do we do? All beneficiaries, the cash have cards, beneficiary cards with their pictures and information about them that they claim they present to the distribution centers and they are given the cash on a monthly basis. Behind that card, there is the hotline numbers for the Nairobi, that in case someone has complained or there's very many issues that have arise because of the anarchy in Somalia from that region. Aid agencies were not able to monitor effectively that region, which is a very vast, there's a lot of security, the, the, unless you use partners of which uh, the behavior are questionable, some of them, uh, aid agencies could not directly monitor what goes on. But now what we do, we have a database of all the beneficiaries that we deal with in South Central of Somalia, with all of them their telephone number. Somalia has been a country that has, has been wounded by civil war for the longest running civil war in, in Africa. Interestingly, has a very high telecommunication presence. Very, you, you, even the must, there's every major city, you, the phone must are competing with the, the, the houses. The telecommunication <laughs> presence is very high. Thank you, Yusuf. So, That's really interesting to hear about how you're applying yeah. the applying that learning. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm afraid I'm going to have to move on if you're if you're if you can hang on because we we want the rest of the audience also to have time to ask questions. I've already got about seven will, will questions allow, online. Um, yes. Just allow me to finish for thirty seconds. What we do in Somalia now? <laughs> <laughs> Immediately after the cash distribution we are able to randomly call every village and ask them uh, post-distribution questions as to whether they have got their entitlement very well on the way they were served, were they taxed by militia, is there anyone who has should change them, all that question. is an effective way using a two-way communication with simple two mobile phones. Uh, thank you, you can go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. No, that that's extremely interesting and thanks for sharing that with us. Now,